How's it going guys? I'm Robert from Machado Visuals and I want to talk to you about one of the sexiest parts of filmmaking and that's storage. But in all seriousness, storage is something that not a lot of people talk about or even think about. So I figured that I'd share some of my insight on what I've been doing for the better part of two years. I'm obviously using a two car garage in this instance, but maybe there are some things that you might be able to take away for your own setup. So let's take a look. So this is kind of my cart wall I have set up in my garage as kind of work surfaces to use. Um, they're just innovative carts. Um, this Voyager 36 is actually the one that goes out with me all the time on jobs. So usually I'll load this up and use this as a prep surface to either build cameras and, and, and load it up with cases and then I'll just load it right up into the van. So this one actually travels with me all the time and this is probably the one that I use the most. This card over here is actually uh, an OG Scout 42 that Innovative used to make. Um, these guys were super, super wide. I think it's 28 inches wide. A lot of the newer 36s and a lot of the newer carts, they're I think 25 um, inches wide. And so these were, they got very, very tricky to fit through even standard. They fit through standard doorways, but it got really, really, really tricky. Um, but it makes for a great workstation. So that's kind of what I've repurposed this Scout 42 um, to be. This kind of just lives here and is a place where I can kind of tinker with cameras with kind of any sort of tool I could ever need. And it's also the main place where I charge all my batteries. Us being filmmakers, we're always charging a bunch of random batteries, but I've kind of consolidated it down to mostly gold map batteries and like the smaller Z batteries that you find in a lot of the newer Sony bodies. Um, I have another dual bay NPF charger here that every now and then I'll pop in an NPF. Um, but I typically, I've, those are usually for monitors and I'm usually running a DTAP into monitors anyway. So nowadays on set, we have a million different USB devices that need to be charged. And this is kind of what I found the best way to charge multiple USB items at once without having to go back and re-plug it into a different device just to charge it. So with this, I can charge through all of my tentacles, all of my GoPros, all of my 360 cameras, whatever needs charging, I have a cable for it. And so this makes it really easy, especially when I'm on the road and not having to deal with a million different wall bricks. This is kind of one of the best solutions I've found. Down here is where I charge both of my EcoFlows and I've been getting a ton of use out of these. Um, I did a video on them a little while back and I kind of use them as a replacement uh, for block batteries, a super affordable, kind of cheaper alternative to those. And so these are great to power the camera or charge literally anything on set. And these are just kind of overall clutch to have. And especially considering that they're, I think 900, almost 900 watt hours and they charge within 30 minutes. So having two of them, you kind of just have perpetual power throughout the day, which is great. And up here, this fancy kind of work light is just a, a Quasar Rainbow 2, two foot, um, just kind of standing in as a, as a very, very high quality work light for this surface. Um, and I'm so crazy OCD that I've, I've used my color meter and taken an ambient reading from the fluorescents that were already in the garage and plopped those numbers in, into the Quasar Rainbow 2. So theoretically, these both of these sources should uh, be the same so that my eyes aren't kind of playing tricks on me when I'm kind of coming up with a camera build or something like that. And the last thing I want to mention is this MacBook setup. This is the laptop that I'm always bringing with me on jobs to either media manage or to do remote interviews. Um, this is always what I bring with me. Um, this is just a 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro. Um, it's set up on an innovative Digi system. So it's just got a baby pin on the bottom so I can just mount it to a regular light stand. And it's neat in this application because once I get home from a job, I can pull it out, set it down, get some work done. I can, you know, play a podcast while I'm prepping a camera, watch a movie, do firmware updates. That's also really easy here because I can just pop the card in the computer, uh, pop it back into whatever device I'm updating just right here on the cart. I don't have to, you know, go to my office or anything like that. It's all kind of self-contained here. And so this laptop just kind of lives here um, whenever I'm not using it. And so whenever I take it with me on the job, um, since it's always charged, close it down, pop it off and throw it in its case. And whenever I go out on a job, it's fully charged. So um, I love having this super, super nice to have. And it's probably where I spend most of my time. 
All right, so this is my camera aisle. And as you can see, I have a lot of Pelican cases, um, but this is kind of where the majority of my gear is. Um, on this side, I have basically all of my bigger standard size 1510s and 1535s and a lot of kind of my bigger items. Whereas on this side, um, I have a lot of the smaller bits like camera support and, you know, media base plates and, and audio, but let's, let's not talk about audio. So this is kind of your standard Husky shelf rack and these are adjustable. So I've kind of made this length long enough to comfortably fit three 1510s on top of each other. And so they're all kind of grouped similarly in that um, they all kind of contain, each row kind of contains a similar item and they all should be the same case model. Um, for example, this first row, they're all 1510s and they all contain batteries. Second row, all 1535s and they all contain more or less camera stuff. And because they all kind of stack together, it makes it really nice and kind of flush. And so they all kind of soft lock with each other, meaning that I can move them around and they more or less kind of stay in the same place because they all kind of latch together. Another kind of really important note is that all my cases are labeled so that they're very clearly and easily identifiable, um, even if you're far away, so that if I'm you know, yelling over to an AAC asking for um, you know, something that's in my AKS case, they can, visit, they can do a quick scan and identify exactly what case I'm talking about and then pull that case. And so I use a Brother P-Touch uh, label maker. Um, it's amazing. Um, I use one inch labels and so everything, again, super easy to read and I know exactly what's in what case. When you have as many cases as this, it's kind of necessary. Otherwise, all your gear would just be in disarray. So having solid one inch labels are super, super nice when you're labeling your gear. So the last thing I want to talk about in this camera aisle are these cord bags that have quickly become like some of my favorite organizational tools that I have. I'll leave a handful in my AKS and literally just hanging around like this in my kind of gear area, just to store small little knickknacks that don't necessarily have or need a, a hard case, um, but still need to be organized somehow. So these are great. Um, they come in a bunch of different sizes, small, medium, large, extra large, I think. Um, I really love them because they all kind of have this snap hook that you can literally just hang off of any anything. And what I'll usually do is I'll, I'll have a couple of these and I'll kind of chain them together to a carabiner and then I'll hang this off of my cart. Um, again, just to store all the small little knickknacks and I'll usually use it for media and it kind of exposed cards and stuff like that. Um, in this instance, I'm, I'm using them to house things like Mapbox backings that, you know, again, they don't necessarily have a place to live except for in this pouch. So it makes it really easy when I'm, you know, prepping and I need, you know, a specific small little camera rigging item like a cold shoe or if I need some random lens supports or if I need a specific clamp adapter ring. Um, you know, again, these make it really, organization really, really nice. Um, they also have Velcro strips on each of them so you can add your own patches or Velcro labels to them. Um, they have a little transparent label window. Um, as you can see, I've just kind of labeled just right over the top of it. Uh, they have Molly webbings on the back, which is really nice. The snap hook, like I mentioned earlier, and then these really, really good zippers. As I'm sure all of you know, not all zippers are made equal. So these are super tough, super durable, and they're just made really well. It's easy to identify what is inside of it. Um, and I'm not sponsored by them. I just really enjoy their product. So this is kind of my G&E aisle. And as you can see, I just have so much stuff. I used to be able to walk all the way down this aisle, but I just can't anymore. It's impossible. Um, I will admit that I have slowed down on and purchasing lights and grip equipment lately, um, only because I've been fortunate enough to be on jobs where I don't necessarily need to provide all of, all of the lighting and grip. I'm able to work with, you know, people that have trucks and, and I'm start, I'm trying to really start to delegate that and, and not really rely so much on me bringing everything. At the end of the day, I'm a DP and I just kind of want to to worry about camera department. So um, that's the kind of trend that I'm trying to move towards and I'm trying to spend a lot less time in this aisle and trying to spend a lot more time in that other aisle. But uh, nonetheless, 
I do have a lot of stuff, um, a lot of apertures, as you can see, you know, a couple 1200s, 600s, 300s, and you know, all the modifiers and doodads, IntelliTechs, um, you know, a couple panels and, you know, just a lot of stuff. Um, it is nice on those jobs where, you know, there may be a little bit of a smaller production, um, but it is nice when I am able to bring a lot of that stuff out only because I know the gear um, and I'm also obviously able to get a little bit of a rental on that. So it's kind of a give and trade whenever I'm able to work with other people that kind of provide their own G&E and &E. and I'd, I'd much prefer that to where I can just focus on camera department. Uh, but it is nice whenever I do bring out all the lights and all the things um, that I am able to get a little bit of a rental on it. So give and take. All right, so last thing I want to talk about is this hamper and bin that I have. And this is what I use to transport all of my grip equipment. So I'll start with my C-stands and I can fit right around 12 C-stands. And then between those, I'll you know throw in my stingers and my sandbags, any you know, combos if I need, and maybe pepper in any lights if I can fit them. But this can kind of comfortably fit all of my grip equipment. Just I'll load this right up into the ramp on my van and I'm good to go without having to, you know, take off every single individual C stand and then stack them, you know, in my trunk. And um, with this, I'm able to just really simply load in and out as quickly as I can. Um, this hamper is from Uline. It's their heavy duty version. So it can withstand, you know, a beating and I've had it for a few years and it's still going strong. This sort of side mesh canvas thing is, is also super nice to just take down. And that way you can kind of reach all the way down in the bottom of the bin whenever you, you are clearing it out. So again, I bring this with me every time um, I'm bringing any kind of grip equipment. And this has kind of been my saving grace and ultimately is an integral part of my workflow. All right, so that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, for as long as I can remember, I've always used my garage as kind of a storage space and I'm super fortunate that I'm able to be in that position to do that. I know some people don't even have a garage to store all their equipment. So having a kind of dedicated space like this is super nice. I wouldn't necessarily call this a studio tour because it's not a studio. Um, it's just more of how I've been organizing and kind of the method to the madness that I've kind of developed over the past, you know, however many years I've been doing this. And I've kind of think I finally have it dialed down. Um, speaking of studio, I, I do have one more thing I want to show you. So this is my brand new studio that's almost done with being constructed. As you can see, I have a few more things I've left to do, like doing the floors and installing a few mini splits for air conditioning, and as well as putting a grid up in the back half. But this is basically where all of my gear is gonna be housed. And I'm planning on using the back half as kind of my own little YouTube studio or even just kind of small studio in general because there are every now and then there are jobs that come up that require some sort of small kind of studio setting. So this will be able to accommodate that. And as you can hear, it sounds just terrible. So I'll need to do a lot of sound treatment in here as well, but we're chipping at it little by little. Hopefully this video is helpful in some way. I'd love to know some of your organizational tips and things you do in your workflow that help you stay organized and keep clutter to a minimum. If you have any questions, obviously feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.